About a month before the program started, the night before all my best friends left for college, I was speeding down old country roads with my friend Patrick. We were talking about our respective future plans while putting off the inevitable, the goodbye. Patrick told me how shocked most people in our grade were when they heard of my gap year plans. The people I had gone to school with for most of my life didn't expect this from me, which led to my own shock. I thought about this when I boarded the plane to Guatemala on the very first day. The question of, should I be here, haunted me constantly. Part of the reason why this question was always so hard was the fact I couldn't define who I was myself. I never knew if I was the type of person who would be on a gap year like this. I knew I cared about every aspect of the program deeply, but was that enough? Throughout TBB, we have a seminar series focusing on who we are. We dive into complex issues like gender as a social construct, race issues in everyday life, and the one that seems so simple, it's nearly impossible to answer. Who am I? Even before TBB, this question stumped me. How can anyone truly have an answer to that, especially an 18-year-old girl who has lived in the same town her whole life and has been surrounded by mostly the same people? As any person who doesn't like dealing with the unknown, I put myself in a box. I wanted straight answers, no shades of gray. However, I never realized how much that limited me. When I hid aspects of myself, I was scared people wouldn't accept or contradicted the idea of who I thought I was. So when we were each assigned to present our river of life, our background of who we are as people, I was scared. I was scared everyone would see through the fake persona I embody to fit other people's standards. I was scared of not liking the real person I am, the one I hid from most people at home. I shared my river and part of who I was, but three days on the trip had not completely fixed me from my childish thinking of 18 years. For my river, I explained my life in a puzzle composed of four parts, and I believed I was a different version of myself in each of those parts. However, my life is more like a 1,000 piece puzzle that all together makes me, and only having part of it can't let you see the full picture. I realized that's the same with TBB, but I didn't realize the extent of it at that point. I knew I was a part of TBB's puzzle, at least for the GGY 2019 to 2020 version, and so without me, it also wouldn't have been the full picture. Still, I barely made progress in Guatemala. Most of my relationships stayed surface level and I still searched for a box to put myself in, except this time it was in various personality tests. I felt classified by the number on my Enneagram test and after reading cover to cover the guidebook to the Enneagram, I knew that those numbers were just a new box, even if they were generally accurate. I became scared of limiting myself and in turn limiting my view on myself, of others, and the world the exact thing I wanted to expand on my gap year. Throughout the program, I focused on that like a mission, to expand my view on my life of others in the world. I started to find new ways to connect to people. Those on the program I wasn't originally close to and people from new cultures I didn't have a lot in common with. Throughout Ghana, we had volunteers around our age who helped translate for us at home and at the clinics. But our relationship was much more of a cultural exchange than anything. One day in the clinics, Melanie Mason and I were having a conversation with Sam and Johnson, two of the volunteers, and Tina, the head nurse at the clinic. We got into a controversial conversation about whether abortion should be legal. I didn't say anything. I felt uncomfortable speaking out how I felt when I knew the three Ghanaians were very religious and very opposed. However, I realized not speaking out for what I believe in would only continue my cycle of conforming for others. With the support from Melanie and Mason, I stated my own opinion, and we had a civil conversation about the whole topic. To expand my view on the world, I took up reading. To be more accurate, I became obsessed with reading, always having a book in my hand, unlike in my childhood, which showed me different perspectives on life. My new favorite book, which I read on the program, is the famous memoir called Educated by Tara Westover. I finished the book in a couple of days, but spent months afterwards contemplating it. I was impressed, to say the least. Tara grows up in rural Idaho in a family who believes the second coming is on its way and has a vast distrust in the government. 
However, Tara battles her way out and now has her PhD from University of Cambridge. Once she moved out of her house, Tara had the constant struggle of being the person her friends knew at school and the daughter her dad raised when she was home. This continues for years until she can't take it anymore, and her true self, the one she grew into at Cambridge, comes out at home. Sorry for the little spoiler, but it's only a small part of Tara's puzzle, so read the full book to get the full picture. My obsession with educated was deep-rooted, and I didn't know where it came from until a thorough analysis of myself. The truth is, I was awestruck that, I, that somebody could grow so much and be so proud of who they are in an environment that would never accept them. I had my own worries of taking this gap year, growing and changing, and when I went home, my childhood friends wouldn't look at me the same way, wouldn't accept me. I'm not completely cure of those feelings, but I do care more about who I am than about what they think. This new awareness of others in the world created the opening to see myself in a different light. Because I don't value the superficial things in life as much, I no longer equate my worth with them. This led to see myself in a way I was incapable of before. Detached from the idea that external things define me, I was open to be who I wanted freely. I'm not saying I know who I am, but now I have the freedom to be whoever I want. Last week, we had our isolation day, a day where you spend hours in nature by yourself but with only your journal, and I chose to sit on the beach of a lake near my house. The lake used to be my friend's hangout spot and where Patrick and I drove to on that night seven months ago. Sitting there by myself for hours in the cold, I thought back to the conversation Patrick and I had. I thought about how scared I was then about going on the program and unsure I was of myself at times and how different I am now. It was strange. The last time I was at this lake, I was daydreaming and worrying about what my gap year was going to be like. And this time I was trying to make sense of the incredible past six months. I don't know if it was having the space to be whoever I wanted, being in new cultures that showed me what my true values are, or not having the superficial metrics to define me. But I know without TBB, this change wouldn't have happened. Now that I'm back, the two most common questions are, how have you grown and what was your favorite part? I don't have a solid answer to either, which is difficult considering those two questions are kind of the basis for this whole presentation. These questions frustrate me. To answer how have you grown or what was your favorite part was to only complete one corner of the TBB puzzle and for people to think that it was the full picture. It wasn't. Same with this presentation of learning, which is why I procrastinated on the project so much. I struggled with picking one topic to try to encompass this whole journey. However, maybe if you put all, of, all nine of our presentation of learnings together, you can start to see the faint outline of what our journey was. That's how TBB helped me find myself. I can't see the full picture, and now I don't want to because limiting myself to be only a certain way leads to a lack of growth and complacency. But I can see the silhouette of a girl doing whatever she wants. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Sidra. Sidra, do you wanna share a little bit about your like um, next steps, where you're going to school, kind of a little bit about your, your five-year plan. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm a planner. So this summer, um, well, if Corona passes, I'm supposed to have an internship in DC with a congressman. And then in the fall, I'll be heading to Elon University um, and I'll be double majoring with nonprofit management and international relations. And then after college, I hope to, you know, like go into the Peace Corps and stuff like that. <laughs> Wonderful. Do we, oh, okay, answered, that question was answered. Do we have any other questions for Citra? Ooh, top choices for Peace Corps locations. Wow, this is a hard question. Um, I have been looking like everywhere on the trip, we were kind of like scouting for places to go and I kind of fell in love with Morocco. So right now I'm trying to learn French and Spanish to go there, but we'll see. I'm still open to others like Peru or whatever. Yeah. Great. Um, what is on your reading list now? So what are you reading these days? 
Um, I just started Eat, Pray, Love, and I watched the movie on the program, but I'd never officially read it. Um, and then there's a book called Wild West Wild Country or something that my mom really wants me to read, and it's another memoir of someone who grew up in um, West Virginia. Great. We have another question. What sector of development makes the most impact in your opinion? What area do you hope to work in? Oh, um, for my entire life, I've always wanted to like focus on education. And I do think that is very important in development, but I also struggle with going into a place and being the one that provides the education because that's kind of what leads to an oppressive educator. And I don't want to be that, but I would be happy like working with nonprofits in countries that have like already kind of developed some or like organizations that have already started nonprofits for education and like being a person they like come to for resources and stuff and so like providing them with things. Um, so right now I'm kind of struggling with that where to find like the balance between helping and being oppressive. <laughs> 